Hello again. Uh, so I'm going to read to you the first reading selection that we have. Um, so if you go to our class, scroll all the way down to week 12. Um, right now it's number four. So it's reading selection, Andre Marie and Pierre questions. You've only got two questions. So as we read, think of these two questions. So how has Ampere's law contributed to human safety? And name at least three safety devices we have in our homes. So go, um, I'm gonna go to Carolina Science Online and here's the reading that we're supposed to do. So here's Andre, uh, Andre Murray Ampere and he lived from 1775 to 1836. So I'm gonna zoom in. Remember you click on the page to get the gear up. I'm gonna to go to one page at a time and then I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so I think that's good enough. So Andre Marie Ampere, father of electromagnetism. So it says, the year was 1820. A scientist named Andre Marie Ampere was working long hours in his lab. He was introduced, or he was intrigued by news of an experiment done by Hans Christian Orsted, a Danish scientist. By chance, Orsted discovered that a compass needle moved when he brought it close to a wire carrying an electric current. Orsted could not explain his observation. Ampere decided to repeat the experiment and find an explanation. Working furiously, Ampere had the, the explanation within a week. Ampere's determination and success were no surprise to those who knew him. Born in France in 1775, he was a child prodigy. As a boy, Ampere was interested in mathematics and wanted to study Euclidean geometry. His parents thought their son was too young to tackle such work. So he decided to study geometry on his own. When a librarian told Ampere that many of his books um, many of the books he wanted to study were only in Latin. He was not discouraged. He, sim he simply learned Latin. So, Ampere's scientific work. Math may have been his first love, but Ampere was al also a scientist. At about age 25, he became a university professor of physics and chemistry. His knowledge of both science and math led him to many discoveries. In his, in his investigations into Orsted's moving compass needle, for example, Ampere was the first to show that electrical currents produce magnetic fields. So um, that's something that we learned about with the magnets and um, moving electricity in the first lessons. He demonstrated that if electrical current passes through two wires in the same direction, the wires are magnetically attracted to each other. If the current travels in opposite directions, the wires repel each other. He used a mathematical model to show the relationships between electrical currents and magnetism. This work became known as Ampere's Law. Later scientists used Ampere's discoveries that currents in wires can create attractive or repulsive forces between wires as the basis for developing a way to study the measure to measure the amount of current in wires. Ampere taught math and science for most of his adult life. He wrote and he wrote on many subjects. Ampere died in 1836, but his name lives on. The Ampere or AMP um, and I know a lot of you want to call it AMP, and that's fine. Um, that's the abbreviation um, for speaking, but we know when we write it, it's the capital A. So the Ampere or AMP, the unit of current, is named after him. Electrical devices have a small plate on the back of them that tells the number of amps or electrical current they need running through them to operate. So um, we're going to read this little side excerpt to help you answer these questions. So, current affairs. Ammeters, like the ones you use in your investigation, enable you to measure the amount of current passing through wires and electrical devices. Knowing the amount of current in the wires in your house, for example, is essential to keeping your house safe from electrical fires. Another device called a fuse also has a major role in preventing electrical fires. Many fuses, many homes have fuses in their electrical systems. 
Fuses prevent too much electrical current from damaging appliances, computers, or other equi equipment. A 30 amp fuse can tolerate 30 amps of current before a strip of metal inside, inside it melts and opens the circuit. When the circuit is open, the current stops. This prevents wires in a house from overheating and starting a fire. Many homes have circuits have circuit breakers instead of fuses. If too much current flows through the breaker, a spring in the breaker is released. The spring opens a switch and the current stops. Your home remains safe and sound. So these are the fuses that um, will melt. So um, fuses come in different sizes and shapes. The round ones seen are often found um, in household fuse boxes. The smaller uh, cylindrical fuses are found in electrical devices. So some older houses have these circular fuses. Newer houses have this box um, of circuit breakers. So these are found in your house. This is found in electrical devices. Um, the fuses prevent too much current from overheating wires or damaging components. When the current gets too high, the metal strand in the fuse becomes hot and melts. So these are the ones that actually had the fuse to melt. The melting of the strand opens the circuit and stops the current in that line. So just like when we open the switch and it stops current, these fuses melt and they stop current from going through. So this is a circuit breaker. Circuit breakers have replaced fuses in many homes today. Too much current flowing through the breaker releases a switch in the breaker and opens the circuit. Each breaker controls a separate line. So um, sometimes if you've got your hair dryer plugged in, lights plugged in, all into the same outlet, it can trip this breaker because too much, too many amps are trying, too much current or amps are trying to go through that same area at the same time. So what happens so it doesn't overheat is this breaker will trip and then you'll have to go to your breaker box. Mine's in my basement. I have to go in the basement and reset the, the switch. So I have to open the switch totally up and then close it back so everything will start working again. So mine does this a lot at Christmas time. I'm about to decorate my house for Christmas and I like lots of lights. So I, I have to um, reset my breaker a lot because there are so many lights outside that my the um, breaker opens up so I have to go down and reset this because I've got too much too many lights outside so the reason houses transferred from these round um, fuses to a breaker box is because once this melts you can't use it again so you have to buy a brand new fuse and put it in your house whereas this one you can just flip the switch but i hope you learned something from this and um, make sure that you write down oops wrong one three safety devices we have in our home so we could have a breaker box or we or the fuses it depends on what your house has so i want you to look in your house and tell me if you have these or this one so my house that i had in birmingham Birmingham had these, so I had to change out the fuses if I'm if one of these melted. Um, these go in your electrical devices at home, so try to think about some of the devices you have in your home that would have these types of fuses. But hope you're all doing well, and hope I can see you again in the next couple of weeks. Bye.